So we've got this BF109 and 70 seconds kill from Tamiya all painted up with decals and pin washes applied, which means it's ready for some weathering in this oil paint extravaganza. So get out your bottles of enamel thinner and let's begin. Actually, before we break the oils out, I forgot to paint these little tips on the control surfaces in red. Alright, back to the scheduled weathering. I'll be using four colors primarily, light grey, bitume, burnt umber, and brown wash, all from Aptalung 502. I already did the port wing, so I'll be showcasing how to achieve this result on the starboard wing. You could see the difference right here. So let's begin with a layer of dust, of sorts. This is kind of a spontaneous method I thought would work, so you guys be the judges and let me know if it works well. The light grey was applied in dots close to the leading edge of the wing all the way to the tip and then streaked back with a dry, somewhat flat brush and blended with small amounts of enamel thinner where the paint buildup is too much. I suppose this helps accent the direction of flight, as if it wasn't obvious enough, uh, and can represent some initial layer of dust or wear buildup. But the most important thing this does is tie the two camouflage colors together and make them seem more, um, more tied together, which is typically the purpose of a filter. The same was done to all the other surfaces, so the fuselage, tail, and underside of the aircraft. The most important thing I found was to blend the paint until the brush strokes are barely visible. In hindsight, I should have blended the paint a little more to make the result more subtle, but that's a lesson for the future. After giving the paint some time to dry, I painted some leaks and stains on the top of the wings. Burnt Umber is a great sort of universal color for this, and while I'm not 100% sure on how realistic these leaks were on the 1 to 1 scale model, I took the aircraft modeler's creative approach to it, which is, if there is a panel or hatch, have something leak out of it. I find these small touches add a lot of character to the model, and also I think they just look super cool, so there's that. As I mentioned before, the same light grey oil paint treatment was given to the bottom surfaces of the aircraft. It turns out Aptilung 502 light grey has a slight bluish hue to it, and is very similar to the base coat here. However, it did still make the surface look more worn and faded, including the black and white markings, which now look very integrated into the surface. Using burnt umber, I put down some streaks coming from the engine cowling and other maintenance hatches. German engineering or not, all of these vehicles typically got very dirty. Using brown wash oil paint, I painted some dirt streaks and leaks coming from the gear bay as well. Some of these might look a little extreme right now, but that's the beauty of oil paints. You've got plenty of time to fix anything you don't like. It takes a little time to get the hang of working with oils, but once you understand how to manipulate the paint with both dry and damp brushes, you'll be able to achieve a plethora of different effects. The surface still looked a little plain, so I added some very subtle random streaks from different panel lines, not to recreate anything specific, but just to fill up the empty space a bit. Then I took my stippler brush, and with just a smidge of bitume oil paint on it, I recreated the staining from the 20mm cannon shell ejection slots. I simply dipped the brush in a little bit of paint, and then removed most of it on a piece of paper before rubbing it into the model. The same method was used to recreate some dirt on the wings, as well as the exhaust stains. I also used the same paint to add dirt on the hinges of the engine cowling, because these areas would see a lot of handling by the crew and would get dirty really fast, whether it's from grease and oil in the engine or the dirty hands of a ground crew member. The oil is dried to a nice flat finish, which means no more varnishing, so I was able to take off the masks off the canopy as well as take out the packaging foam I put inside earlier to prevent paint from being sprayed into the cockpit from the wheel wells. Then I could glue the canopy back in place permanently now. I recommend doing it with PVA glue because it will not harm the paint or plastic, but because I'm so cool and I like to live life on the edge, I used a very small amount of Tommy Extra Thin. So now we can put on the rest of the smaller details on the wings like the pitot tube and the cannons. 
All the parts except for the cannons were painted with the base coat color they were sitting on, and the machine guns and cannons themselves were painted in a dark grey, after which having some gunmetal pigments applied to them. The machine guns on the engine cowling were more difficult to reach carefully with a brush and some pigments, so instead I polished them with a pencil. There are no more parts to glue on, so let's go bring out some paints again to do some finishing touches. These enamel earth tones are great, whether you're doing armor, aircraft, or scenery. They have some very nice colors and dry matte. Or at least they're supposed to. I don't know why, but recently my loose ground paint has started drying into a glossy finish sometimes, which is not ideal. I finished two 70 second scale armor models in the past few months, check them out on my Instagram by the way, and that's where the problem first showed up. So if anybody has any idea why this could be happening, let me know. My Molotov chrome pen showed up mid project so I was able to try it out on the navigation lights. And let me tell ya, this is the best non airbrushed chrome paint I have ever seen. I would highly recommend it, especially for aircraft modelers. The exhausts were the last thing I painted, um, because I simply forgot about them. But since they're fairly hidden, the process was simple. A neutral grey base coat, some white chips, then a light wash from crusted rust deposits and enamel paint, and lastly some soot staining on the tips with bitume, the same oil paint I used for the exhaust. And that's it, another model done. So this was initially supposed to be a simple and out of the box build, and don't get me wrong, it was. It just took me around 3 months to finish. That's one of the reasons why I've been absent from YouTube for the past couple months. Also I had university and didn't get much bench time. As I mentioned before, I think the dust oil filter thing on the wings could have been a little more subtle, but I think it turned out um, okay. Let me know what you think of the oil work by the way. To be honest, this was a pretty pivotal model in my growth in the hobby. Because I took way more time with it, I was able to step back, look at it a lot, and figure out what it needs, but also to pay way more attention to every small corner and getting it the way I want it to be. Personally, I think this model is a big step forward for me, and I learned a lot making it. And I think it doesn't look too bad. So the next project is going to be bigger, more involved, and it's going to be a lot of fun, so make sure you don't miss that. But in the meantime, I want to thank you for watching and give you an even bigger thank you if you've been following this series. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. I post more regularly on my Instagram and Facebook pages, link in the description, so you can check out more of my work there. Thank you again for watching, and I will see you all next time. Peace.